everybody, here we are once again. Time for your Home of Economy podcast. And uh, I'm going to tell you this right now. One of my favorite podcasts because, um, well, I love Home of Economy. In fact, uh, Scott Pearson from Home of Economy on the show today. And, uh, you know, Scott, I, I, I always tell you every time you're in here that um, I'm in Home of Economy a bunch. <laughs> I happen to be. Yeah, well, and I always thank you. <laughs> and, and, okay, on Saturday, now, it was, I think, the third time I was in there uh, last week. Uh, I needed some um, primer. I needed a brush. And my wife had to go do some shopping in the Amish Furniture Gallery. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm good now for about a week. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing her, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, I kind of got forced into it, but uh, it, it turned out really good. And I can't wait to see uh, the new glider that she got. But uh, Scott, winter's coming. Home of Economy is the place for basically everything winter. And we're going to talk about pretty much everything winter. But I do want to ask you this first off. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was great. I got to spend it with uh, my son and his family, my grandkids. Did uh, you do the cooking? Nope. No. Nope. Didn't even have to cook. Really? I figured you'd be whipping up something fancy on that Traeger. Well, uh, I did I did this weekend. Okay. Okay. And uh, we're actually going to talk about uh, cooking a turkey. And uh, I think a recipe that you have, and, and I've eaten your food numerous times, and you are quite the gourmet, especially on those Traegers. But, um, you know, uh, all things winter, I mean, we could talk about Christmas recipes, winter items, ice fishing, all of that stuff. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, now you got me thinking about food. <laughs> Thanks a lot here with no food in the, in the studio. I know. I'm hungry, uh, too. <laughs> but uh, So, yeah, let maybe, uh, maybe talk about the, uh, the turkey. Uh, okay. If, if you have a Traeger grill, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about cooking a turkey on a Traeger, or are you talking about a regular oven? Well, it doesn't matter because a Traeger is an oven. Exactly. Okay, yep. so walk us through how Scott Pearson would cook a turkey on a Traeger. Well, um, the the key to uh, to having a turkey that is juicy and moist is not overcooking first. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the the technique is called spatchcocking. Okay, and spatchcocking simply you remove the backbone from the turkey, and that you open it up kind of like a, putting a book face down. Okay, and uh, and then the heat. Uh, can get to the meat from both sides. So say an 11 pound turkey, that'll be done in about 90 minutes. Oh, really? And uh, not at especially high temperature, just mm -hmm. simply because the, the heat gets to the meat from both sides. So it's more evenly done. You spend less time dehydrating the bird and uh, in, instead you just simply cook it. And then when you serve it, you put it breast side up again and, mm -hmm. and, and tuck the bottom under it. it it actually isn't quite as pretty, the presentation. Well, yeah, but, you know, uh, it, you know I don't really care about pretty. Uh, I care about goodness. Yeah, it's, uh, presentation's important. To it me, it is, it the is. Other, the other thing you can do uh, is uh, it takes a bigger, uh, bigger shear, but you can split the breastbone uh, as well and just cut the thing in half. Okay. And, uh, um, and then you have two halves lying on the plate, which might be... Uh, nice for a large gathering, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of thing, and uh, and the, the results are the same. Uh, do you ever do like uh, rubs or injections or anything like that in a turkey? Well, we do sell um, actually this year, especially uh, the Traeger uh, Orange Brine was hugely popular, and I've done that and I like it. The the you know everybody has their preference, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, mine really is a is a dry. Uh, rub a dry brine. Uh, you separate the skin from the meat and work kosher salt, uh, you know, on the cavity side of the bird and under the skin, and you can put a little bit over the skin. Um, and then an herbed butter uh, is good, but uh, I don't really like the overnight brine mm -hmm. method. I um, I when I do ribs on a smoker, um, a, a friend of mine was actually the North Dakota State Rib Cookoff Champion. Uh, he has since turned vegan. Anyway, but uh, he's got a homemade rub, but he said, in a pinch, go to Home of Economy and get, I uh, believe it's the Butcher's, is that right? Butcher's Blend? Or? There's a Butcher's Blend. We have we have a, um, a lot of different rubs, mm -hmm. and, and it's constantly changing, but, uh, um, and the rubs, it's fun, because you can try a lot of different things, and 
you know, you buy a packaged product like that, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, what you might think up yourself at home, hey, you know, it sounds good. Maybe tarragon would be good or whatever. You don't have to do that. Uh, it's in the rub and you can, you, you can use the packaged rubs and get more of an idea of what you like. It's like somebody feeding you ideas. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm going to admit, I don't know if there's a store anywhere near here, Grand Forks, that has all of the things, whether it be for grilling, smoking, or just outdoor cooking or indoor cooking, that Home of Economy does. Now, th- when you're talking about the way you do this, this turkey, uh, any of your customers, I'm sure you've passed the word on to them. Uh, have you been getting any feedback about how good those turned out for these people? I've never had anybody say anything other than that was the best turkey I've ever eaten. Is that right? Yeah. We do have the recipe on our website. Uh, I uh, produced a video, uh, and so it's a video recipe. Uh, we use the brine kit, um, which, as I said, is good. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's everybody's preference. My favorite is not necessarily your favorite, so there's nothing sure. wrong with using a wet brine. Mm-hmm. The thing with a wet brine, you do want to be sure that you give it a maximum of one hour per pound. Okay. Uh, beyond that, the acids in the brine and such uh, can tend to start making the meat break down and, and uh, ruin the texture a little bit. So uh, people, you know, sometimes think if 10 hours is good, 20 hours be better, and it, it really doesn't work that way. You want to you wanna go about one hour per pound and try not to go over that. Now, did you just learn all this on your own, or do you have any culinary training or anything, or are you just it, kind of experimenting over the years? Uh, primarily my own. I, I, I study uh, whatever I can get my hands on, and, uh, uh, you know, of course— uh, I love I love to eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm a good eater. I've been told and, that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I I don't know if I've ever eaten anything I didn't like. So, uh, but uh, you know, that's uh, I experiment on myself. Okay. Uh, you know, we all know this uh, when it comes to cooking Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. Uh, it, it seems like people kind of run out of room. You know, if you've got maybe eight or you to live in Minnesota, can't have over 10, but say you got 10 or a dozen people over there and you're cooking this big Christmas dinner, uh, you're going to run out of room. Uh, I heard you maybe have the perfect solution at Home of Economy. Uh, well, you might have to tell me what you're thinking, but the Traeger, of course, is a very large oven. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a wood-fired oven, so uh, depending on the temperature you use, you'll get some smoke flavor or, you know, it might be significant. It might be, if you're using a high temperature, you get almost no smoke flavor. Mm-hmm. So, for example, you could cook several pumpkin pies in, in the Traeger. Uh, you could do the turkey and, uh, and a pie at the same time. Uh, you know, save your, your indoor oven for, uh, for other things. Um, sweet potatoes are great on the Traeger, regular potatoes, baked potatoes come out great on the Traeger. So it's just an expansion of your, of your cooking space. You know, the day after in the morning, uh, this is one thing I, I first tried at home of economy, um, on the Traeger was the, uh, it was like a candied bacon, something Uh, like that. Oh my gosh. How good is that? Well, Traeger bacon is wonderful anyway. Yeah. Uh, there's a secret to that, too, um, which is to uh, stick with relatively low temperatures, 225 to 250, and just let the smoke soak in and, uh, and the fat leak out. <laughs> yep. Uh, bacon turns out shatteringly crisp, but without toughening up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then you add uh, brown sugar to that or a maple syrup glaze. And it's really wonderful. Oh, boy. It's like candy. Yeah. I mean, it is so good. You know, uh, knock on wood, we've had a pretty nice winter. Uh, We know it's coming. (laughs) It always does. I mean, we live in the darn tundra, you know. Yeah. Uh, What can people do to prepare for winter? I mean, uh, we could talk about, for one thing, the winter gear, but there's so many other things that you probably need to do around your house, too. Uh, you know, checking your furnace, your filters, you, all that kind of stuff. But how can somebody up here, maybe somebody just got, uh, uh, maybe they just got transferred here to the Air Force Base and they just came from Hawaii or whatever, and they've never lived in a winter up here. What can we do to prepare for winter in North Dakota or Minnesota? Hmm. Um, well, of course, dressing warm, that's how you stay safe in your vehicle. Uh, you know, it's, uh, if you're just driving in town, it's not that big a deal. But uh, in a blizzard, driving in town, um, you know, you can get stuck. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, you know, I mean, bad things can happen to you just sitting in your car. You really, sh- you know, in another context, I was told once, uh, what you're wearing 
is your is your survival gear. Yeah. Uh, what's in the back is your picnic gear. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, warm warm clothing, Carhartts, uh, you know, are are great, and uh, that's a, a wonderful thing for us. We have warm boots. We have uh, what we call the Great Wall of Gloves, um, the largest yes. selection of gloves of, of all kinds, uh, work gloves and, and winter gloves. Uh, hats, you know, I, I, I get a good hat, one that doesn't let the wind through. Um, you don't want to be out on the highway and, and uh, you know, and go in the ditch or stop to help somebody and have your ears freeze off. Right, right. And, and uh, I actually put a pair of muck boots on my Christmas wish list this year. I've never owned a pair. But, like, what about base layers, too, where it all starts? I mean, you used to have to wear, and I hated having to wear long underwear. Um, I actually had a friend, you know, the old school long underwear. He used to wear them backwards because you wouldn't have that problem with them all getting all bunched up and stuff when you try to get your clothes back on. But the the long johns or, or the base wear that they have nowadays and at home of economy is so much different than what we used to buy 10, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's snug. Um, it's very warm. It's not all that thick. Right. And uh, so you can just wear, you know, a set of Under Armour base layer under your under your dress clothes and uh, whatever. Um and and they're really comfortable. That you know, it's uh, probably probably more comfortable than not. Oh yeah. Um, what about like foot and hand warmers? Do you use those? Um, I'm I'll use the hand warmers once in a while, but I've never tried the foot warmers yet. And and I I tell you what, there's a couple of days sitting out on a lake ice fishing or uh, moving snow. You know, if you're on a like a four wheeler like I use, and you're not really working your feet a lot, your feet get darn cold out here. Yeah, ice fishing has been the worst for me. That's about the only time my feet get cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, you know, it doesn't take a lot of added heat, and those those little packets uh, they provide a lot of heat. Yeah, and they last a while too. Yep, and you know you can you can buy a big bag, you know, a uh, big package of them for not a lot of money, and uh, you know they don't they don't start working until you let some oxygen into the bag, mm-hmm. uh, so you can keep them in your glove box, in your tackle box you know, in your pockets, whatever, and just use them when you need them. You know, uh, the snow is going to fly. Uh, Home of Economy has got a great selection of snow removal tools. Uh, the, th- the funny thing is, when you think to yourself, I need a snow shovel, and you go to Home of Economy, and it's like, I never realized there was this many snow shovels available, but all certain types, ter- certain kinds, depending on your needs. Uh, I think we hit on this before. I've actually got a plastic one for my deck, and I've got a steel one for my sidewalk. But uh, and you guys have got a fantastic selection of snowblowers too. Yeah, yeah, we've um, <clears throat> we have different different. Uh, actually, we've got Cub Cadet here in Grand Forks uh, snowblowers, and uh, they can sure take the work out of it, save your back. But uh, you know, the, there's so many different ways you need to move snow. You need the pusher to line it up. You should probably get a scooper. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some of the plastic ones with a metal edge uh, can be nice. They're not so heavy. The snow doesn't stick yep. to them. And, uh, and yet you can, you can scrape right down to the pavement. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, a couple of different snow shovels, uh, even if you don't have a deck, is, is probably the right way to go. And you want to get them before it snows. Yeah, uh, you yeah. Don't, it, it, you don't want to be, uh, you know, looking at four feet of snow outside your door. Right. And, and, uh, and I actually got uh, the aluminum scoop shovel. We used to call them a grain shovel back in the days. Uh, I bought one at Home of Economy a couple of years ago because, yeah, there are times where you can't just push the snow. Uh, you've got to actually physically shovel it. But another thing a lot of people don't realize, especially if they're new to the area up here, uh, your vehicle, uh, scrapers. I mean, have you ever been in a pinch and you pull out an old credit card and try to scrape your windshield with that? Um, a good scraper is a huge must. Yeah, I broke my credit card that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we've got we've got a big assortment of scrapers and, uh, the, you know, the long brushes, the short ones, uh, and uh, there too, you know. Um, Probably two in a vehicle is the way to go. You, mm-hmm. you know, you don't. It, you can use a big long one to do your your side mirror or something like that. But uh, the ones with the brass edge, I really like. For yeah, the, for the frost, and uh, then you need a big one with a chisel blade to. When you get you know, through that yeah. ice, yeah. 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 Um, how important is it uh, to have a new battery? Um, all your your antifreeze, all of that kind of stuff, because you know, summer driving and winter driving are a lot different. Yeah, batteries uh, actually the summer is harder on them, but you find out they've they've gotten weak when when mm. the cold snap hits. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, uh, if the battery starts getting you know uh, 
you, you, you're cranking a little slow. The thing to do is just get it tested. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, we can test the battery. We can tell you if it's, if it's getting weak, if it meets its specifications or if it's, you know, falling short. And, uh, so the last thing you need is uh, in the morning time to get to work and the car won't go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing at my house, and this is something I need, um, I do have a, I've got a double-sided wood fireplace on my main floor, but how many times during blizzards does the power go out and does home of economy carry generators? And what would you recommend? Um, well, for, for a whole house power, which is, uh, you know, the easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the 4,000 watt and up generators have the 240 volt uh, side, which, you know, is then able to power everything in the house, not all at once, mm -hmm. but uh, a generator without 240 volt with just 120 volt uh, can only power half of the circuits. Sure. It can only make power available to half the circuits in the house. But, uh, and of course your furnace doesn't usually run on a cord. So, right, right. Uh, so you got a 50-50 chance of, yeah. of actually, uh, you know, running the furnace. Uh, so a generator, uh, 4,000 watts and up is good. Uh, besides that, like the electronic igniters on the furnaces, uh, 4,000 watts is, is what's recommended as a minimum. Mm -hmm. So we have Honda generators of all, you know, the whole product line of Honda. And then we have Champion generators. Uh, so that some of those are uh, uh, dual fuels. So you can use either LP or gasoline and LP is nice because it doesn't spoil. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make mm -hmm. a mess out of a carburetor. So it's a really good standby fuel. But um, having that having that uh, gas option on the same generator, uh, you know, uh, when in a big blizzard, when you're when you don't have choices, mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to have choices. Okay, now what about um, say you know you mentioned the uh, generator not you might not be able to plug it into a furnace, but space heaters now uh, different types. It's a lot different than back in the old days where you got the old chicken coop heater or a Nipco. How many people you know bring a Nipco into their house during a blizzard? Uh, space uh, they, heaters they will if the house is going to freeze. Well, yeah, but I mean. <laughs> Not very healthy, and yep. now I'm sure you guys have got a pretty decent selection of heaters too. It, it, different forms, uh, different styles, but way safer than they used to be. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, we can thank regulation for that. That's a good thing. Uh, tip over protection and and overheat protection, but you can still you still have to be smart how you use them. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about uh, well all the bad bummer things about winter. Let's talk about some <laughs> yeah. of the fun things about winter now. Um, let's start with ice fishing. Home of Economy got an incredible selection of everything you need for ice fishing. Yeah, it's very complete. Uh, fish houses. We've got uh, we've got a new model in uh, with a walk through door. Um, I, I don't remember the the model name of that, but uh, maybe maybe I can get that from behind me. The Eskimo XD. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just looking at that one on Saturday. And it, it's nice when you walk in the store because you've got a bunch of them set up there. So you can actually sit in them. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. some of these, I mean, they hold seven, eight people. And they're insulated. Uh, you get yourself a little heater. Um, you get yourself an auger that you can get at Home of Economy, and you're all set. Now, if you're new to ice fishing, now, this is the one thing I like about Home of Economy. And we have talked about uh, uh, the people that work at Home of Economy, and they're, and they're so knowledgeable. But... You could go find somebody in your store and say, look, I've never ice fished before. Can you set me up? What do I need? Oh, How easy is that? Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of us that are ice fishing enthusiasts. And uh, so it's, it's kind of like welcoming somebody new to your sport. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, a, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, we get pretty enthusiastic about that sometimes. And, you know, uh, wear clothing for ice fishing. Uh, very important now. Uh, now, in fact, they've got uh, the ice fishing suits. Uh, they're waterproof, and I, I believe they help you float too, don't they? Some of the ice fishing clothing has flotation. It's not. Um, it's not PFD rated, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, um, but, but it'll it, keep you up there for a while longer. Yeah, yeah. If you break through the ice, it's going to help you a lot to get back on top. Right, because the main thing is, is the hypothermia setting in so quickly, and, and this will help that. Yeah. And uh, how important is it to have some ice spikes with you, too? Well, it depends on how bad you want to... <laughs> I mean, you look at the reports, there's people trying to go out on, like, Upper Red Lake and stuff, and there's traffic jams up there right now. 
I would be really weary to go on the ice right now, and uh, I would hope these people would have some ice spikes with them. Uh, oh, you're talking about the the hand spikes. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, again, if you fall through, um, there it's, it's a it, yeah, it's a thing that you stab into the ice to pull yourself out, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you may or may not get out that way. And of course, uh, once you've broken through the ice, well, you found a weak spot, but the ice is weakened in that area, and somebody else can't safely approach. So uh, having, uh, you know, a couple of spikes on a string around your neck is great. Mm-hmm. I thought you meant like the foot track. Well, I was going to get to that next. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, uh, those... Slipping and falling on the ice, uh, you know, is, is it's, it's a common injury. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the worst part about falling on the ice is that quick stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many times have you gone head over heels or flat on your back uh, because you hit that one little spot of ice on a sidewalk, but now they have got gear that's easy to put on your shoes or your boots, and uh, it's right there at home of economy. Yeah, yeah. You just uh, slip them on your foot. It's kind of like putting putting you know the old rubbers on your shoes, mm-hmm. but uh, but easier. Yeah, it's like uh, studded tires. Yeah, on your feet. Yeah, yeah. That uh, some of them actually did use tire studs, but uh, n- now they've got a special special type stud for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, are you cooking Christmas dinner this year? I am. Okay, uh, what 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 is on Scott Pearson's menu? I'm dying to hear this. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be rack of lamb. Oh boy, and uh, that's one of my favorites. It's really easy, and uh, uh, it's it's just lamb is so wonderful. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, rack of lamb, of course, it looks beautiful on the table, and the family likes lamb, so that's probably how we'll go. Do you have a specific place where you buy your meats? Um, not only, but I, I really do like laddies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, you never go wrong there. Yeah. 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 It's, it, uh, I buy a lot of meat at, at Hugo's. I, you know, I spread uh, the wealth a little bit around the local well, area. A little bit. And, and, uh, you know, you, if, if I'm in Hugo's, for example, and, uh, and I see something that looks great and it's on sale, you know, that's what's for dinner. Uh, this might be a dumb question, but the rack of lamb, will that be on a Traeger? Oh, yeah. That was a dumb question, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it's, you know, if you don't have a Traeger, a rack of lamb is still wonderful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, uh, well, uh, what gets more use at your house, your oven in your kitchen or your Traeger grill? Mm, in the summertime, definitely the Traeger mm-hmm. because I don't like to burden the air conditioning. Sure. So, well, yeah. Uh, and I love the smoke flavor. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in, in, uh, in the wintertime, sometimes I don't feel like getting dressed up to go outside to cook dinner. So then... You know, I use the oven. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Um, one thing I forgot to hit on, uh, now this time of the year, we talked about you losing your power and everything, but uh, how important is it to change those furnace filters? A lot of people, you know, it depends on what filter you buy. They should be changed every month, every two months, depending on what you get. But a lot of people kind of blow that off. Yeah, it's a lot better for your for your furnace to change the filters. And uh, if they start to plug, uh, the air starts to go around them and uh, you lose the filtration and then you're getting, uh, you know, the, the crud isn't on the filter, it's on the fan blades and yeah. it's in the duct work and things. So a person should do that on a schedule. Just, uh, you know, keep track of how much your filters are accumulating and, and put it on the calendar, really. That's the best way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, any big events coming up uh, over the holidays at Home of Economy? Any big sales, anything like that? Well, there's always a sale running, mm-hmm. um, and uh, um, we got some fun stuff, and and uh, uh, but I don't remember specifically what's yeah. happening when. Yeah, I was telling you before we went on here, um, I was in there on Saturday, and I think I ran into six different people from my hometown of Thief River Falls. So, uh, uh, boy, people that, they drive an hour to come to Home of Economy, and uh, they love the store. As, he tried to tell me he likes it as much as I do, but I know he doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's uh, that's nice. That's nice to hear. Um, we we try to do a good job and offer, uh, you know, a, a great variety. And of course, the pricing is important, and a guaranteed lowest price is important. So, I imagine that's that's why they're they're coming to, to coming to Grand Forks. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometime, I you know, if somebody from Thief River is in, it would be it'd be great to hear specifically what brought them yeah yeah and it was fun running into them because they're old friends that i haven't seen in a long time uh the website i know it, it's it's a work in progress how's the new website coming along uh it's it's going along really well good um, we're uh 
we're having to add uh, more people to the fulfillment team because uh, um, it's it's you know become a, a larger job than the than the current crew uh, can keep up with easily. But uh, we're still we're still filling uh, same day or uh, at worst the the very next day. So shipping shipping is still going out on the same day basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what is the website by the way? Oh, it's guaranteedlowestprice.com. Pretty easy to remember. Yeah. I mean, it says it all right there. Well, and, and it is the guaranteed lowest price, so that's yep. pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll be going back again soon. Uh, I'll be going back to the Amish Furniture Gallery again. <laughs> yeah, the, the, Amish, uh, the Amish has its own website, but that's not a shopping site because really 90% of the product is custom made. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't see a good way to to walk people through that custom uh, order process right on the website and that's a that's a you know something that really should be done with personal touch i did have a couple of uh pairs of nervous eyes watching me when i was waiting in in the furniture gallery because i was walking around with a with a gallon of uh primer (laughs) you were gonna set that on the coffee table well no i would i wouldn't do that but i think they were worried you know what if he drops it oh man hopefully that thing doesn't open up because I actually uh, knocked a full gallon of, of uh, stain off of a coffee table at my house a couple of weeks ago. And uh, now you know why I'm buying new furniture. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know that. When That's... it dropped, it exploded. And it, yeah. I mean, it shot 10 feet across my living room, hit both chairs, a couple of lamps, well, my sorry couch. To hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so, How's the floor? Uh, new carpets getting put in right now. So, wow. yeah. It was a sad ending. Be careful. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, the more uh, careful you are. I, I, I know. And that's it. Uh, I mean, I was very careful, but uh, not careful enough. Uh, Scott Pearson, love talking with you. Uh, again, uh, Home of Economy, my favorite store in Grand Forks, hands down. And uh, we'll be doing this again soon sometime. And um, I wish you the best of a happy Merry Christmas. Well, thank you. Merry Christmas to you. And it's- and Always a pleasure to be here and talk with you. Hey, maybe we could uh, get together, do some ice fishing this winter. I'd love that. I oh, that'd been be fun. Ice fishing for a long time, and I'm looking. I'm looking forward to some this winter. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get some going here. I live right on the Red Lake River, with some good spots within about a mile of my house. So uh, maybe we could work something out. Yeah, I think I'll go with you. All right, perfect. Oh, <laughs> uh, there you go. That's Scott Pearson from Home of Economy and our Home of Economy podcast. Um, you know, it's so much fun doing a podcast when you know so much about the store. Uh, I I could talk about Home of Economy forever, but uh, they'll be back. And everybody have yourself a Merry Christmas from all of the crew at Home of Economy.